Boxing heads aside, you mentioned proving the, the public wrong. Yeah. And how much of that would be just Daniel Jacobs bullying Canelo on May 4th? Well, do I, don't, that? I don't necessarily think Canelo can bully me. I mean, I think that um, it's, it's, it's going to be really hard for him being the smaller guy to kind of dictate that. Um, I'm a rough guy when it comes to when it comes to being inside that ring with me. You might see, you know, me from the outside, it might look different, but when you're actually in there, I'm a physically big guy with speed and power. So it's more so about the game plan I choose to use to, to be um, uh, victorious. And with my last fight with Sergey Dervinchenko, I could have pushed Sergey back, but it just would have been a battle of guys trying to push each other back. So I wanted to use a a different plan to try to get the victory because obviously me having experience with that guy, I knew the type of fight that he was going to bring. And I knew that to make it an easier fight for me um, is not really to try to go in there and impose my size and try to back him down. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we show a different side too. And he was able to see a lot of slipping, a lot of um, countering, different things that you probably haven't seen from me in a long time. You know, De La Hoya said that a test for Canelo is going to be when he hit you and you're still standing right in front of his face. What about the flip side? When you hit him with everything you got and he's right there, have you thought about that? I haven't thought about um, really any of that. I mean, all I really see and envision is just my hand being raised at the end of the day. So um, I envision knockouts, I envision decisions, all the positive things, but as far as controversy or as far as negative, as far as him not being able to uh, or him being able to take my punches or him being able to push me back. I haven't really thought about any of that. I mean, we don't, we don't think negatively. You know, we only go inside that ring and think positive. Um, we're ready for anything that comes our way, but ultimately we're just on a positive uh, way towards victory. You know, um, your trainer has mentioned this being your Hall of Fame fight. You win this and it's stamped and, and you're there. What else would this mean to you to get your hand raised? Like you said, you've envisioned it and walked through. Well, I think to me, it would truly show that, because um, this, I don't want to say it's a bitter taste in my mouth as far as the Golovkin fight, but, you know, to me, it would let the fans know that, you know, if you thought I won, if you don't, then that would clear it all. I am the best middleweight in the world, because I've always campaigned and said I'm the best middleweight. Um, but I've always also been vocal about them taking the fight from me. Um, so with a victory over Canelo, I think not only does it kind of erase or, you know, put a new idea in fans' mind that, you know, well, maybe this kid is the best, you know. He's proven himself against a guy who actually beat Can uh, Triple G. So, um, and then I can give Triple G the rematch and then finally prove uh, to the world that I'm better than he is. You know, throughout this media tour, you've kind of relished in being the underdog role. Has that felt good? I remember in New York, in the New York City stop, you, you really, you know, you loved it. You loved every second of being the quote unquote underdog. Does that feel like a welcome role for you? You know what it is? It's just, I just love energy. And regardless to if the fans are rooting for Canelo, I kind of just, or if they're booing me, you know, I just, I take it and I use it as fuel. So. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've definitely embraced the under... Thank you, Scooter. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Scooter, come here. You, you want to... Everybody, this is Scooter. <laughs> he's going to make sure that he gets... Oh, you're the best. You're the best. So love you. I don't need this right now, Scooter. That I don't need great. that right now. Hey, Lil? Yeah. No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, um, well, I'm sorry. So you're saying the, the energy, uh, the energy of the of the underdog role you really appreciate it from fans yeah so no the the energy that the fans bring whether it's rooting for me um or rooting for canelo or even booing me i take it and i use it as fuel because i just like for people to be chanting i like for people to to, to be roaring i like for the house to be just you know through the roof that fuels me so whether or not the energy is for me i'm going to use it as my fuel you know last thing is uh you mentioned that you know, beating Canelo on May 4th would kind of wipe away the, the Triple G controversial mm -hmm. win, right? So if, if that happens and you have your hand raised, would you, st would you still like to get Triple G back? Oh, 100%. 100%. But it's just absurd that... You can't look at it. 
No, no, no. I mean, I never, I never look past any fighter. But I, I was gonna say it's absurd how uh, Golovkin and his team was always saying how people were so fearful of facing them and that they were in it for the love of the sport and that they wanted to fight the best. Mm -hmm. Now, me getting the victory over Canelo, um, you would think that they would want a rematch, but you know, we heard it out of the, their own mouths that they still wouldn't want the rematch if I was to beat Canelo. They still would want to face Canelo. So in that aspect, we also see that boxing is a business and that they're looking for the biggest paydays that they can possibly get because I would have proven that I am the best and I have all the belts at that particular time when it happens. And for him to still look in another direction just shows you exactly the impression that I left on him uh, that night we fought. Do you take that as a slight or a compliment? It could be oh, considered it's a compliment. as both. <laughs> oh, for sure. It, it's a compliment. Because I've always known in the back of my mind that Triple G know he lost that fight. I could see it in his eyes when they gave him the decision. Um, and he hasn't really been vocal ever about giving me the rematch. You know, it's always just been small talk or wiping it under the rug. So for me, I just want to make sure that I uh, not only fight Golovkin again and, and, and prove the naysayers wrong, but prove to him that he knows that I'm the best fighter and I'm better than he is. This is the last thing. What has been the hardest part of this particular training camp, um, perhaps in introducing new wrinkles that you haven't necessarily done before? Um, I haven't really done anything majorly different than any other camp that I've, I've had. We just had a lot of guys who spar uh, kind of similar to Canelo's style. Um, and I've kept my camp here in New York City. Um, we have everything that we need here uh, in this facility at uh, Competitive Edge Athletics. You know, I've been training here for the last, say, five to six years, and this is the biggest fight that we had. I wanted to make sure that I was home and can be in New York and still feel that energy where it all started, still feel the vibes, and go out to Las Vegas and uh, make history. You think you'll bring a slice of Brooklyn with you for the... Uh for your entrance? Absolutely. I'm going to go to Brownsville because we leave tomorrow. So I'm going to go to Brownsville to make sure I get most of that love that, you know, that I was raised on and feel that energy so I can go out and, and conquer the world because, you know, it's, it's and, 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 and where I'm from, it's, it's, it's Brooklyn versus everybody. I keep saying last question, but do you do that before uh, most, most of your fights? Go to Brownsville? No, I so don't. I don't. don't. I've done it for big fights before. I've done it for the Golovkin fight. Um, but this will probably be the second time that I actually purposely go back to Brownsville to get some of that love, to see my neighborhood, see my, just, you know, revisit where I'm from, to see where it all started, just to feel lively, to go back out and, like I said, conquer the world because I really feel like this is an opportunity for me to fulfill my dreams. This is my one shot. Does that clear your mind when you go back home or what does that do for you? It Mindset clears my mind. It, most importantly, it just motivates me. Um, like I said, history in Brownsville, just Brooklyn alone, it's just, it's really hard to describe it, but if you're not from there, you would never understand. So for me, just to go back and get most of that love and to get that energy, get that vibe, go back out to Vegas, I mean, it's, it's going to be priceless. And you'll do that today? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no worries. Uh, speaking about controversial losses, Daniel, uh, like with Golovkin, uh, you Your voice is really soft, bro. You're going to have to bring that up a little bit. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, speaking about that controversial loss with Golovkin, yeah. what do you take from that fight going into against Canelo? Because it was a little bit controversial. I don't agree that it was unanimous, maybe even questionable majority at best. So what have you learned from that fight going into this fight with Canelo? Um, that you have to be more decisive in your win. You can't make fights close. You have to go in there and um, you know, leave no doubt in not only the judges' minds, but the fans' minds that you have best Canelo inside that ring because, you know, from the outside looking in, most people would say that there's favoritism towards Canelo uh, when he's fighting in Vegas or when he's fighting anywhere in the world. I mean, we've just seen uh, Hamu Mangum, what's his name? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so we just seen a very controversial fight, and I thought uh, Mr. Hogan won that fight, you know? So it just goes to show you that 
what fans speak about as far as you know there being this sort of influence that Golden Boy has on judges or has on boxing it's just really not making it easy so for me I have to stay focused and make sure that I go in there and make a decisive win so that we can have no controversy. Now, of course, Canelo brings a lot of fundamentals into the ring. He has very good counter punching, a lot of speed, a lot of power, utilizes very good movement. So how are you, is there anything that you're doing different in this training camp to prepare for that kind of fighter, that kind of style in the ring? Uh, the only thing I would say I would do differently is um, switch up my sparring partners and be a little bit more on my feet. So I've been coming forward a, a lot of my past fights. Uh, I've been more of the aggressor, power puncher, I think um, the only thing different for this fight is, um, you know, obviously Canelo takes a pretty good shot. He's very elusive in his upper body. So we want to make sure that we're a little faster on our feet and with our hands and with our combinations than we're used to seeing in, a, in some of my previous fights. Hey, Danny, um, on a recent call, um, Canelo said he felt that you won fighting against Triple G. Yeah. Um, he has a lot of respect for you. He yeah. also said that you're the most unique opponent he ever fought. Mm -hmm. So what are your, what's your respect level for him? Like, do you feel that he's as good as Vice says he is? Um, only time will tell, but as far as respect, I mean, I give him all the respect in the world, because... Well, I mean, like, on the outside looking in, yeah. do you feel that he's as good, like, you know, somewhere in the top five, pound for pound? Do you feel that he's... Oh, yeah, good? definitely, definitely. Uh, definitely top 10, pound for pound, I would say. I would break Canelo, um, because there are some controversial fights that he had that I felt like he lost. And I thought he lost both fights with Golovkin. But as far as respect, yeah, I mean, I respect any opponent that steps foot inside that ring um, and faces another man. This is a kill to be killed sport. So, but that's where the respect ends. As far as going inside that ring and, you know, wanting to be the victor, wanting to take his head off and wanting to prove to the world that I'm the best gladiator out in the world that there is, you know, that's, that's my true intention. So there's no respect when it comes to that. But, you know, we're both gentlemen and we're both, in my opinion, great ambassadors for the sport, so it shows. But outside of that, I mean, once we're inside that square ring, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be a blood sport. Okay, one more thing I wanted to ask you is, are you tired of talking about the judges? It seems like every interview, somebody asks you, <laughs> are you worried? Yeah. X, Y, and Z, do you have to knock them out, knock yeah. out, knock out, knock out? And in your last couple fights, um, you haven't got the knockout, but you always got a knockdown. Yeah. So, you know, does it kind of like, I mean, probably not in your head, but is it like annoying to you at some point? It's like, okay, we get it. Yeah. You got the judges. I mean, like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a little annoying that we keep having to talk about uh, judges and them not being fair or giving Canelo favoritism. It is annoying, but it's also a fact. In, in, in most people's minds, so I think that's why it's talked about so much. Um, so I mean, I don't mind answering the questions, but it could be it could be a bit of annoying because I want to be able to go in there with a clear mind frame that I don't have to fight two people. Well, not two people, but how many judges are there? So what? Four people, right? I don't want to have to feel like I got uh, more uh, stress on me than I need to because Canelo is a force in himself and. It's going to take, in my mind, it's going to take a lot to figure him out. Okay, um, kind of contradicting myself because now I'm about to ask you a question about the judges, <laughs> but um, the Laura fight, people felt he lost, the Triple G fight, so he felt he lost both. So, can you, is it kind of hard to look back at those tapes? Because it's like, okay, I felt like this guy won and this guy won, but he didn't get the decision. So, is it kind of hard to have somebody to choose, okay, I'm going to watch this fight? Other than Mayweather, which was so long ago, right. was it kind of hard? Um, no, it's not really hard. I still study the Lawrence fights. I still studied fights in both Triple G fights. Um, I still studied fights in which most people thought he lost um, because, for me, uh, those are his bad habits, right? And those were guys were able to exploit some of his bad habits. Now, Camille may have the best uh, upper, upper body, body movement and head movement, but you know his his legs and, and his knees doesn't really hold up well and um, you know he can't really cut the ring off uh, let's say like a Sergey Durbinchenko or, or Golovkin or you know somebody like that who's a power uh, power pressure type of guy so we look at certain things like that and then me being one of the longest fighters that he's faced too and being so fast I think I'll be able to really use that to my advantage. And the last thing that I wanted to ask you is you know you said it's kind of like your legacy fight um, 
you know, I think a lot of people feel you win this fight, you go into the Hall of Fame. Um, even if you don't, you still got a great shot. You know, you have a long career ahead of you. Um, going forward, do you feel, though, like, do you feel like you get the respect from everybody? Not just, I mean, if you look at the middleweight list, you're probably, I don't know, probably everybody will have either two or three, mm -hmm. either behind Canelo or, you know, maybe behind Canelo or Triple G, something mm -hmm. like that. So you mm -hmm. get a lot of respect there. But at least I don't ever see you on the pound for pound list. And right. I think you deserve, like, a lot of consideration for it because you mm -hmm. feel like a really lot of good fighters. You have really great style. You've knocked out a bunch of people. Do you feel like you get the respect in that aspect? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good question because, you know, sometimes in boxing, you really have to prove yourself. And if you didn't have the name and, and the power and the brand to really uh, be marketed to the world, um, you really have to still work at that to get that recognition. So I think with a win over Canelo, I would be given everything that I'm rightfully so deserved. Um, but as far as not being in pound for poundless or, you know, none, none of that stuff really matters to me because that's all about the fans anyway. They can pick and choose who they see fit as far as uh, pound for poundless goes and who they like. And that's a favoritism thing anyway. So if I'm not the fans favorite um, after this fight, then I got a lot more work to do. But my job is really not to um, I mean, worry about so much skill. about that. It's really just to you know, go in there and be victorious because it's still my job. So. Forget about the skill, though. Do you think it's probably because you're not an asshole? Like, you know, <laughs> like, you're like a super nice guy. Right, right, right. You literally talk to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, maybe some other guys probably won't talk to everybody, but you're like just super chill. And really I don't know. Cool. I know. I, uh, for the most part, not just in boxing, but in sports and in the world, controversy sells. So, I mean, I'm not sure if that's why I'm not a bigger household name, but I can't really focus on that. You know, where I come from, I stay true to who I am. Um, you know, how I was raised, I will always uh, keep that integrity as far as being a stand-up guy. And um, me having a child, I know he watches everything that I do. So, you know, I can't be goofy, you know, like some of these dudes are. Um, out here in the world just to get, you know, more ratings. So, like I said, boxing is my job, and I have to make sure that I come to work prepared every day to, to be victorious. Gotcha. Appreciate you. Thank you, man. By the way, I'm from Brownsville.